I first came across ecstasy when I was uh, aged 50, which is a bit older than most users, I think. But um, I'd heard about it for some years before, but hadn't really had the opportunity to get hold of any, when I was visiting a friend who said, oh, I've got some, come around next Sunday. So I did that, and this was someone I didn't know all that well, and I was a little bit worried about it, and uh, wasn't really sure what to expect. And uh, so I thought I'd better go somewhere where I felt comfortable and light, which for me was Kew Gardens. And we got on a train, having taken the pills, got on a train there. And from sitting down in this old British Rail seat, I suddenly realised that the seat felt wonderful. And I, I really enjoyed rubbing my, like my head against the seats and stretching out. and. It was wonderful, it was like a whole refreshing new experience and I, I began to take deep breaths and, uh, and then I started to look back on and think, well why didn't I always feel like this, because I didn't feel not normal, I just felt normal, which I hadn't before. It came on uh, relatively quickly, um, taking it inside a jacuzzi, um, just the two of us, it's kind of very warm temperature, a very sort of pleasant and pleasurable and sensual environment. I just remember being almost cast adrift on this timeless ocean of sensory sort of um, just a benevolent kind of um, emotive feeling. So literally projected into um, a foreign land without maps sense and we were left to discover everything for ourselves. Well, it was actually synthesized for the first time a very long while ago, in fact I think it was 1913, there was a patent taken out for it by a German company called Merck, uh, but they never found a use for it. There's rumours that it was sold as a slimming pill, but I don't, I don't believe that's true. It wasn't until really um, the mid-70s that it became known again as a drug that was of interest both uh, for, uh, for pleasure, but actually more for therapeutic use than the beginning. No one's quite sure exactly how it works, but there's a lot of indicators. MDMA seems to work on a particular neurotransmitter in the brain, known as serotonin, that accelerates um, the production and the utilization of serotonin within the body. And that changes the brain's mood. So it puts you in a state of mind which you wouldn't be naturally at that point, but it's, it is a state of mind that you could be by the body's natural secretion. The effect actually has on me is, is uh, that I feel universally good. I've never taken it when I haven't felt good. Um, I feel very open, very alive. MDMA is certainly benign. It doesn't impeach upon your articulation or your physical ability you feel as you would feel you speak and think as you would think ordinarily or perhaps not ordinarily but it allows you to touch the person that you are despite the stresses and prejudices and exhaustion of uh, your daily lives. You don't lose any sense of who you are, what you are, where you are, but you're enhanced with an ability to perceive what you could be, what we all could be, or what we perhaps all ought to be. As for uh, people in the rave scene, I think it's, it's had a very big impact on their life and possibly will change the values of the, the whole younger generation into being a much more caring, less macho uh, group of people. Now in the 90s, what people seem to be doing within high-tech, paganistic rituals are pretty much the same as we've always done since time.
time began and since the dance originated. Well, I think the new trend of, of uh, clubs where people don't really drink alcohol and take E do produce a very different sort of atmosphere. With the club scene in particular, the traditional barriers between genders, between races, between cultures and between financial and educational backgrounds no longer seem to exist. Here was a, a, here was a substance, a medium that brought people together and allowed them to communicate in unique and diverse ways. People are much freer to open up and touch each other without feeling it's an aggression or a pickup and probably much more emotionally honest without the usual chat up lines and small talk. Dancing becomes more fluid, a great deal more fluent. People are more in tune with the instinctive rhythms of sound and their own physical expressions and reflections to, to that sound um, so that they can express themselves physically in incredibly beautiful ways. In essence, you had groups of people integrating, celebrating, living their lives beyond a weekend. So I think it's a more genuine way of, of uh, connecting and people feel more at ease to be themselves. I can't see why the government really should be against the effects of ecstasy because they do seem very desirable. They, they certainly don't make people difficult to deal with. Um, they make them very positive towards one another and uh, generally fairly law-abiding, apart of course from the particular law about illicit drugs which could be changed. I think that perhaps one of the reasons that the authorities in the last two years have particularly clamped down upon people's freedom of association and people's freedom of movement is that the implications of the newfound unity in the post mass marketed MDMA world that we now fortunately all reside in is that they find ultimately the threat to be in the unity that people experience. Ecstasy is actually in the most dangerous category of drugs which seems to me completely inappropriate and I think actually the the lawmakers are um, making a tremendous mistake because by classifying ecstasy as being as dangerous as heroin and crack cocaine it's uh, the large number of people who've used ecstasy and find that it's completely harmless and none of their friends have any problems with it are more likely to then think oh well these other drugs in the same category are probably much the same give them a go the way ecstasy has come across in the media here is, is just quite ridiculous i believe very recently in time out there was an article saying that ecstasy is uh, laced with ground glass and rat poisons and things completely unfounded as far as the biology tests show in terms of individual people using it it is not the dreaded demon that the media presented to be it's a tool that allows you to look inside yourself with an altered perception and it allows you to communicate with a greater sense of awareness and warmth than perhaps the stresses of daily living would allow us to do ordinarily. I think ecstasy is quite a liberator. Um, I think it's true that it's a pacifier of people's aggression, but I don't think that means it's a pacifier of energy and creativity. So I think it's, it's a beneficial drug for people to take in as far as the, the effect it has on their personality. For a lot of MDMA, takers um, I think the future is bright and there is a lot of work to be done to create the world in which we want to live and with small steps we will walk towards it it will happen so for me personally I just find it incredibly beautiful 
to be with the people that I love, taking a chemical that I love on a planet that I dearly love. And, you know, that, that's basically what it's all about.